welcome back to the Wheel Order channel. Today I'm going to be making a delicious Scottish four for Bridie. Now, I actually thought these were called four for Braddies and I had a conversation with my dad um, earlier on in the week and the, the, the reason I thought they were called Braddies is because uh, we actually have like an Aberdonian version um, called a Braddy and it's very similar, it's a pastry um, that's got beef mince in it and the four for Braddies actually have more like a beef steak um, type of filling and um, it's, it's like a finely chopped steak. So the reason I was getting confused is because the two are very very similar. So I'm actually making my four for Brideys with um, beef steaks, like uh, finely chopped beef steak. If you want a really easier version, um, you could use beef mince, it's entirely up to you. I actually like to keep things uh, as close to the traditional recipes as po possible. So I'm going to be using the beef, the chopped, finely chopped beef steak today. And I would use as tender a cut as you can afford as well, because it does um, make a big difference in the cooking. So these are so, so delicious. This was a real hearty, delicious meal that we had. And to be honest, they were actually so filling that I only had half a uh, bridey for my tea. <laughs> um, they were just really, really filling. So you could probably share them, um, or if you're really hungry, I'm sure you will enjoy a whole one to yourself. <laughs> so if you find it a little easier, you can also print out the recipe to go along with this video. It's on my blog, angiemillen.com. And um, there's not many ingredients to this recipe. It's very, very simple. So let's get started. So for this recipe you're going to need 450 grams of beef. I used um, a top side cut that I had but you could use another um, cut that you have available and I used 75 grams of shredded beef suet, two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, salt and pepper and I used two pre-made rolls of puff pastry. Now if you're making your own puff pastry um, it is approximately 600 grams that you will need for this recipe. So it just really depends on the size of brideys that you're making. So I'm going to start by cubing our um, beef and then we're just going to give this a really good beating with a rolling pin. Now you can actually use a, a meat hammer if you have one available. So we're just going to try and tenderize this a bit with the rolling pin. And so I've just got a, a sheet of grease proof paper on the top here and I'm just using the long edge of the pin and I've also used um, the edge the edge to get some of the fattier bits as well. So we're just really flattening this out as much as we can and then what we're going to do is cut this up into really fine strips. Um, our strips we want to keep them about an inch long um, and we want to try and keep them all roughly the same size. We don't have to be too perfect and there are obviously going to be bits bigger than the others but um, we want to try and keep it roughly about um, an inch long and of the same kind of thickness. So that's all our beef ready and we're looking for that kind of texture. So we're certainly not looking for anything too minced and we still want to keep some texture in there. So we're going to add it all to the bowl now and we're just going to add in our finely chopped onion and our beef suet and we're going to sprinkle in our salt and pepper as well. So just add enough salt and pepper to your um, lichen. So we're just going to stir our beef and our suet and onion and se uh, seasoning through together really well just so that it's like really well distributed amongst all the beef. So we want to make sure the suet and the onion is um, even in taste and texture when we are popping this into the pastry. So to make the pastry, um, obviously I am just using the pre-made pastry so I'm just starting out by sprinkling my chopping board with some flour and I'm just rolling out my roll. <laughs> it's nice and easy. Um, I've actually let my pastry sit and come to room temperature as well so that's really important otherwise you may find that it cracks a little bit. So you just want to make sure that it's at room temperature and it's nice and warm and manageable for um, rolling and cutting out. So we're just going to open that out and then fold it over and peel off the paper um, from the back of the pastry. Now just make sure you're using enough flour so that it doesn't stick to your chopping board um, otherwise you'll end up um, having to roll it out and start again. <laughs> 
So I'm actually using a bowl to cut out my um, circular, circular rounds for my four for brides and your bowl might be bigger, it might be smaller. I got about five four for brides from two rolls of pre-made puff pastry. Now these brides were quite large so if your bowl is smaller um, you might get more four for brides out of your pastry. It just really does depend and it doesn't really matter how many you make, um, you can just distribute your meat evenly amongst how much um, pastry discs you have. So we're just going to cut them all out of the dough here and set them aside. And I did roll up my excess dough and just to make another disc as well. So that's how I did manage to get five out of two sheets. So if you continue to make all of your um, four for bridey rounds and I'm just going to move on with the filling. So we're going to fill one half of the circle with our beef mix. And we want them quite like sort of well filled as well. I like to put quite a lot of um, beef into my four for bridies. So we're going to fill that up. So don't be shy on your filling quantities. <laughs> Um, and we're just going to fold that over and if you're making your own pastry as well you can kind of get an idea of the thickness to roll it out to as well here um, and we're just going to crimp the edges with a fork. So it's very important as well to um, cut a hole in the top of your four for bridey and this is just so that you let the steam out whilst it is cooking um, because it does get quite hot in there and <laughs> you don't want the steam to end up coming out of the crimped area of your for for Brady. So we're just using a knife there just to make a decent enough um, hole in the top. So we're just going to pop that onto our bacon tray and leave that to the side while we make the rest of them. So I actually use a little bit of water as well on the crimped areas just to help seal it but you could also use like an egg wash, just a little bit of egg yolk um, and wash that over or you could use a little bit of milk as well. So I pop these in, the, in a fan oven for 180 um, and for 15 minutes and then I went on to turn the heat down to 140 and I cooked them for roughly 45-50 minutes. It really just does depend on when your steak is cooked inside um, so feel free to open it up and check. And you can see coming out the top of my four for bridey there is a lot of steam coming out there so that, that has cooked really well in the oven. So these just look so so delicious and they were such a delicious meal. We actually only needed like half of one of these for a meal because they were so huge. Um, so you might want to make smaller ones if you want to. So I actually just served them up on a plate with a little bit of creamy stir fried cabbage and some boiled potatoes and I also had some multicoloured carrots in there as well. But please feel free to use um, whatever vegetables you have available and if you're, if you're making them um, during the summer you might want to have a salad with these as well which would make it a nice and light meal um, to have or even a salad to have like half of one of these for your lunch would be really nice as well. So they don't need much these four for baddies to be super delicious, they are really nice just on their own. Um, but as I say, please feel free to add some salad or vegetables on the side as well if you like. And you can see once the four for bridey is ready, the meat is really tender, it's steaming hot and it is just melting your mouth deliciousness. It's so, so good.
So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed making your four for Brideys. Um, I, my mum actually used to stay in four for many, many, many years ago. So she was telling me a little bit about the four for Bridey and, and, and telling me how to pronounce it properly as well. Cause I wasn't, as I would say, I was getting confused with the Brady. <laughs> um, anyway, they're super, super delicious and easy to make. And I hope you enjoyed making them. Um, I'm going to be posting up a vlog uh, next, which is not going to be a recipe video, but it's a, a garden vlog and I'm going to be showing you all my lovely hens and they are super super cute we've just got them the other day and they've been laying eggs for us already and it's so so exciting to have uh, our hens and a cockerel in the garden again it just I just feel that they really fit in well here and it's just so nice for them to be part of our garden again so um, I'm going to show you them in my next vlog so if you're on Instagram as well and you did enjoy this recipe and you've got a photo to share please feel free to tag me and I will share it on my stories with everybody and if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed this video please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it which will keep you notified of my new videos coming out so I have lots of Christmas recipes coming out soon guys so stay tuned for that so take care and I will see you all again soon lots of love bye